All right, hey folks, Mr. Lannan here. I'm gonna do a quick little explanation. I'm gonna put it up on my um, Mr. Lannan Winchester YouTube channel, Mr. Lannan Art Winchester YouTube channel. Put, I'll put the link in there, but also I'll add this little video to the description, to the Google Classroom. But basically, this is our first project. I'm trying to do a unification of various parts of the whole. We're gonna be working in two pieces that we're going to be working with. And then you're going to have to put them both together as one. So the first piece is all about shape to form. Form has volume, shape is flat, right? So I have all of these fold out papers. These are all from old frames that I had at school. I mean, at my gallery. And your job is to choose a secondary color. I chose green, made up of blue and yellow. I'm going to paint this whole thing, that whole thing, one color, solid secondary color. I chose green. You could do violet. You could do orange, made of red and yellow. Then when I begin, you're only allowed to fold this thing on all the, only the designated perforations. Can't do it any other way. I don't want you to change in any of these shapes. So all 40 kids are going to be folding these their own unique way. But in only along this paradigm to create volume. Now, what I was saying is in this volume, like if I hold this in a certain way, let's see, like that, I can't tell if that's a shadow or if it's, a, if it's an empty space. All right? I can't tell if that's a shadow or if that's a hole in the wall. That's actually a hole, right? This one looks like a hole. Right here. Oops, no, it's this one right here. But that's oh, that is a hole. That's a hole, and that's a hole. So it's hard to know what's flat and what's not. So what my next assignment for this? So once you fold it up into a form, I've got form. Everybody's going to be doing this. Then I'm going to take blue and yellow, and I'm going to begin painting sections, either dark green with the blue or yellow, light green with the yellow, right? And I'm going to start building up layers of value, light and darkness of color is value. So from a distance, I can't tell, mate, what happened if I painted that really light green and that a dark green? Then I don't, then regardless of what the light's doing for volume, I'm fooling the eye. So that's step one. Step two is to take the other one and look for the opposite of that color you chose. And I chose green, so my opposite is red. I took red and I added it to white to make a nice pink. And I think these are the pieces I, I could use. No, this isn't the one I had. Yeah, this is it. Then I take my opposite color. I have to paint the other side red still. And then this section, I want you to think about shape, right? Those are shapes and surface design, patterning. Those are art elements, right? So now what I've started, I just used black and white, which I can use because that's black and white plus the color. And when I, the way I did this, I just laid it out on the table. I took a little serpentine line walk. That's just how I decided to do it. I could have separated them and done them separately, but I want to have a continuous line just as a line on, took a line on a walk. And now I'm using black and white and I could use more reds in here. I could use dark reds, light reds, et cetera, right? And I'm going to make this dynamic pattern. So now I have volume over here with value, lights and darkness. So I, some of these planes will look like they're lighter than others. Some will be darker. Some will be the illusion of space. Some will be actual volumes. And then my job is to organize these unifying. That's another one of our art words, right? So now I have to unify this dynamic relationship, I'm not going to get anything just right just yet, but I'm going to build this wild, surf, like connected opposites of the color wheel. One's about volume and form, one's about pattern and design. And I'm going to smith them together. That's what you're going to do. Then when you bring them back to me, I'm going to have about 40 of these suckers, maybe 50 of them from all the different kids from the sculpture class. And then I'm going to unify them all together into one big massive wall sculpture, or maybe a totem sculpture. Maybe it'll be um, a series of dynamic mobiles that'll float 
in the from the ceilings in the hallways or something or in the in the stairwells is what I'm thinking because the lighting is so beautiful there. Um, but the unifying thing is all of us are separated right now, but I want to show the community that we are all in this together. You know what I mean? So the idea of everybody coming with their personalities, right? Everybody's a little bit goofy, <laughs> but because we're all similar, we're all humans. We all can vibe together if we're smart enough. Um, so I'm going to have to, the unifying element to this will be the fact that you're all doing a puzzle piece using these elements, pattern to design, form to volume, shape to form. And then my job is to smith them all together in this big puzzle when they all come in. And that's going to be a, a big, that's going to be our first jumping off project. I hope that explains it. So first one, secondary color, shape to volume using value of the breakdown of green. For my instance, it's blues and yellows. Part two, opposite primary color, red is what I'm using because it's opposite the green. Surface to shape relationship. That's my serpentine line going across that flat shape. Then unifying them together, which is another big word in our, our dictionary called unity. So that's how it's going to work. Um, and um, I'll put this out in the Google Classroom and uh, hope that helps everybody understand a little bit about where this is going. Patience, craftsmanship, intention. See you soon.